Hello world, how is everybody today? This is Louise Hicks, your host of Aim to Purpose Spiritual Empowerment Hour, and I have a great show for you today. Please, please subscribe to my channel and hit that thumbs up button. Leave your comments. We have a great show for you today. And our show is about mental health. And we're going to talk about ADHD. I'm going to share with you an excerpt from Dr. Umar Johnson's speech that he gave at the Kwanzaa celebration at the Greater St. Stephen First Church in Fort Worth, Texas, where he was the speaker and Dr. Michael Bell invited him along with his congregation to come and speak uh, during the second day of Kwanzaa. And again, I'm Louise Hicks, your host of this podcast, Aim to Purpose Spiritual Empowerment Hour. Be sure and subscribe while you're on the channel. There's lots of content out here that's enlightening, elevational, and subscribe. Today, I'm going to talk to you about Black parenting and education, the drugging and exportation of our children. The reason I chose this um, topic is because when I went to hear and see Dr. Umar at the Greater St. Stephen First Church on Wednesday, December 22nd in celebration of Kwanzaa, which I'll share a little bit about you to you about what Kwanzaa is all about because um, I'm gonna show this to you here. This is the celebration of Kwanzaa's 50th anniversary that I attended in California when I was there. And it, it was uh, started, uh, founded in 1966. And this was 2016 when I went to the celebration. I guess you can't see that, but you can see this part of it. And this was the program. And um, let me just tell you the seven principles of Kwanzaa. It was founded in 1966, as I said, and I went to the 19 to the 2016 50th anniversary. It was founded and created by Ma Lana. Hope I'm pronouncing this name correctly. Karenga. And the seven principles are unity self-determination, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and faith. Again, unity, self-determination, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and faith. And those are the principles. And this is our celebration. It starts December 26 and goes through January the 1st. And I attended this amazing speech by Dr. Umar, where he was preaching, he was teaching, he was giving lots of educational information. And this segment that he spoke about on ADHD hit close to home to me which is why I chose to come in today and talk about it from my own personal perspective. And again, I'd like to wish everybody a happy new year because it's early in the year. It's January 7th today. And I usually come in every Sunday and I speak with you on some topic that is relevant to us in the Black community. And I'm happy to say and see Dr. Umar starting his school, which will be opening sometime this year from my understanding what he shared when he spoke with us. And it's, it's a great thing. And it's gonna open up to start out with our young black boys, which is so necessary because we know many of our kids are coming from homes uh, with single parents, mostly single mothers, single black mothers. And now they will have an opportunity to know who they are. The root cause of some of the behaviors within the black community. So I'm so happy that Dr. Umar is uh, setting up this school and, and 
we couldn't, we need to have more schools set up for us as black people, because we know we're not gonna get the education that we should have in the public school system. And the reason I said, I, I'm, let me tell you a little bit for those who may be new, a little bit about my background. I uh, am about to embark upon 73 years of age. So, you know, I've seen a lot. I have experienced a lot. I have a bachelor's degree in social work. So this is why I speak on mental health a lot because I'm an advocate of mental health and an activist that was brought about because of my son, David, who was 14, now 42, when he was diagnosed with a rare bone cancer. And I know how broken the mental health as well as the medical system, they're, they're both broken. And it seems like Nobody is trying to fix it. And probably because you hear Dr. Umar talk about it, it has to do with the money. It's a lot of money in mental health and medical health, medical illness, because if it was health, we wouldn't need it, huh? If we were healthy. So it's a lot of money into it. And he spoke so eloquently about it and gave us some just valuable, invaluable information that we need and what inspired me to talk about this today is because when my son was first diagnosed back in 1995 at the age of 14, my daughter was six years old and she began to act out in school. She was in a private Christian school at the time and she began to act out, taking my jewelry to school and talking in class, pulling cars all the time. And every time I look around, the teachers are telling me, well, we got to talk to you because your daughter did this today. She did that and blah, 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 blah. I mean, it was very frustrating considering I had already advised the school what I was dealing with, with my son being sick and having this rare bone cancer that inspired my award-winning book because I am an author. And he inspired it. And I'm going to get my book back in publication, A Heal to Climb, A Teenager's Battle with Cancer, Depression, and Drug Addiction, which chronicles the crisis that we went through when my son was sick. And he still has challenges of depression. And he went through drug addiction. And I am his conservator along with his father because he still has those challenges that we're dealing with, even at the age of 42. This is why I wanted to share this information to help other parents that may be going through some uh, crisis at their school and the teachers wanting you to put your children on uh, drugs. The main one being Ritalin is what was spoken to me about with my daughter, Crystal, when she was dealing with uh, feeling loneliness, neglect, and her little six-year-old mind was going through all kinds of thoughts on why is David getting this attention and I'm not getting any uh, much anymore because she was getting some, but not like it was prior to the cancer of David. So with that said, I wanted to come in and bring what Dr. Umar said and some of what I experienced with my daughter to help other parents who may be going through this type of crisis, any type of crisis, especially when you're a single parent and you have to navigate this through the system on your own, because I was a single parent when this happened to my son, David, at 14. His father was a participant in the uh, situation we were going through. However, we were divorced and I was a single parent navigating through the broken medical mental health system and the school wanting to put my daughter on a drug, the main one being Ritalin, and I wasn't having it. I said, no way you're going to do this to my daughter. I'll take her out of this school and put her in public school. So what I decided to do, I did research and found out about Ritalin and all of that. It was like giving my daughter candy cocaine. and She'd have been walking around like a zombie, lethargic and all of this, and I just wasn't having it. So what I did, I took her to see her pediatrician. And fortunately, she had a great pediatrician who said, no, we don't need to do that. We're just going to send her to talk to someone, a social worker, and let her talk it out and give her own feelings on what she needs, what her needs are. And that's what I did. 
So I took my daughter based on her pediatrician's recommendation. I took her to see this social worker and she and I and the social worker sat down. My daughter crossed her legs like a little lady and she just started expressing herself. She started telling the social worker, well, I just want to be sick like my brother because he's getting all the attention. I'm not getting any attention and I want to be sick like him. So that was a root cause of why she was acting out like that. And she just needed to express herself. And I needed to have a better understanding of what was going on with her as well, so that I could be more in touch and in tune to what was going on. And I could focus on, I could focus on him, focus on her and had an older son who was helping out some, my son, Kenan, who is into health and wellness now, has his own podcast to the Kinetic uh, Hour, which is great because he's sharing a lot of information as well to help us not to get on these drugs because it's a money maker. So when I went to see Dr. Umar at this uh, Kwanzaa celebration and he talked about ADHD and how it's a money maker and what should be done and could be done to help our children so that we don't end up putting them on all these drugs that have all these side effects and they, you're worse off on these drugs than you were before you started taking them. And I just wasn't going to do it. And before I really get into it and let you hear Dr. Umar, let me share a picture with you of myself and my sister when we went to see Dr. Umar. Here we are. And uh, Dr. Umar has this book I'm going to talk about as well that I bought because I do, my children are all grown. Like I said, I'm about to embark upon 73 in a couple of months, but my children are all, born, all grown now. So I have a nine-year-old granddaughter and I thought this book, I knew it would be helpful not only to her, but to others that I may encounter in what I do, because I do motivational speaking, I do coaching, I'm a business owner, I help out the trades people. Right now, I've implemented a plumbing system for Perfect Flow Plumbing that's located out in the Los Angeles area. And I'm, I'm going to be doing um, podcasts about that too, because we do need more of our people to get into the trades, because that's where your economic growth is going to be coming up in the future. And I'm so happy to say that I implemented this uh, automated system for this black plumber and we need to trade with our, our black businesses because that's important as well. So this is myself and my sister, Dr. Umar, uh, autographing my book. And I was so excited to be there because he was preaching and he was teaching. So I'm gonna stop sharing and get back into this and I want you to listen to Dr. Umar as he talks about ADHD and giving us, us some vital information about navigating through this broken medical and so-called mental health system that's all about money. So let me share this short clip. I think it's about three minutes or so. So I'm going to share it with you. Uh, let's see here. Oh, no, I don't want to share that again. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to share this one this time. And let's take a listen to Dr. Umar when he speaks about ADHD, attention deficit disorder, as they call it. No drug can make you sit there and listen to a whole bunch of lies about Thomas Jefferson and George Washington. Yeah. Yeah. So they put an H in it. Mm. And do you know right now today with the DSM-5, if you take your son to get diagnosed for ADHD, he will be diagnosed with ADHD even if he's not hyper. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. Yeah. The code is written. The diagnostic criteria is written. Even if you're not hyper, you're still considered hyper anyway. Because it's about drug money. 
There ain't no mental health in the black community. The only thing we got in the black community is economic exploitation in the name of mental health. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Your son been getting wrapped around services since he was five. Little John John is 13 and crazier now than he was when the white folks first started making money. Because I don't know if y'all know, the crazier your child, the more money they get. Yes! John John need a one-to-one -one aid, that's some money. John John need intensive case management, that's some more money. John John need a behavioral specialist, that's some more money. John John needs some family therapy, that's some money. John John need partial hospitalization, that's some more money. John John need long-term psychiatric care, that's some more money. Why do you think when you see white people adopt, uh, fostering our children, the white people always have the craziest black children? Have you noticed that? You say, why do white folks always end up with the most psychologically disturbed black kids? Because they want to get the maximum reimbursement from the state. This is a damn hustle. And then when you go to the system and say, I want my grandson to come live with me, father locked up, mother in rehab, I want my grandson to come live with me. And they tell you, you don't have enough square footage. They tell you, your husband, who's now 65, got locked up in 1925 for a stick of weed. So you can't, they come up with every excuse not to give black children to their black families. Yes, they do. And it ain't got to be that way. We can change all these rules. But you got to get organized. We have not organized or mobilized in a meaningful way since MLK. You got lazy. Ever since Dr. King died, they ain't hit you with nothing but a whole bunch of distractions. First they came out with the Betamax, then they came out with the VCR, then they came out with the Walkman, then they came out with the iPad. The problem with you Negroes is all you want to do is party. All you see in the black community is party flyers. We want to party ourselves into a damn genocide if we don't cut it out. Okay, there you have it. Dr. Umar Johnson giving insight and teaching and preaching at this Kwanzaa celebration and he hit the nail on the head. I know from firsthand experience because of what the system was trying to do with my daughter and I wasn't having it, like I said. I wasn't having it. I wasn't gonna put her on any Ritalin, candy, cocaine, because I had seen what it was doing to children laying around, lethargic, couldn't think straight. And I said, no. No, is what I said. I wasn't going to do it. So we need to learn and start parenting. That's why I chose to speak about this today. And again, I'm Louise Hicks. Subscribe, thumbs up, leave your comments about what I'm discussing with you today because we need this. We need this type of teaching that Dr. Umar imparted to us. And I took excerpts when I was there at the Kwanzaa celebration on the 27th of December, the second day of Kwanzaa, that I've given you the seven principles, which are so vital and I'm going to tell them to you again because they are so important. And Dr. Umar touched on so many subjects and he touched on this, the unity, the self-determination, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, faith. We need all of those. We have to bring it together. We have to come together. We have to organize, as he said, we got to organize. 
We have to do those things. Some of these children don't have parents in the home as a father, mother. Some of them are have they're in foster care. And we know I've done many, many uh segments, podcasts with Minister Fred Shaw about this foster care system, how it damages our children. So we gotta start parenting. We gotta start showing that love for our children. We gotta bring the family structure back. The fathers gotta come back in the home. We gotta stop bashing one another. We gotta start thinking about our children, all these distractions, that's all it is. And some parents just wanna sit their children down in front of the, the TV or give them an iPad or a cell phone and just run away from your responsibilities as a parent. We have to stop doing that. We have to come together. We got to stop bashing one another. Fathers, mothers, husbands, wives. We got to bring this family structure back and start nurturing and loving our children. And Dr. Umar really brought it home on this segment. He talked about a lot of other things. But like I said, this one just came close to home for me as a single parent when my son was going through the cancer and my daughter was acting out at school and the school was not supportive because they wanted me to go and put my child on some drug and I wasn't going to do it. Thank God I had a, a pediatrician who knew what was going on and she advised me and found a great social worker for me to go to and my daughter sat there and talked and I was more in touch with what was going on in her head, her mindset. And that helped me to focus more on her as well as my son. Because I think because of him being so ill, I lost sight of what she needed. And me going with her to this session, counseling session, helped me to refocus and be more in touch with both my son and my daughter. And his father was also in his life. Even though I was a single parent, his father was there. He came to the hospital, he would sit and help out with our son, which was great. And I was happy that he was there. So we need these fathers to come back in the lives of your children, come together and parent your children. They need this nurture and they need this love. That can help to elevate them to a higher level of consciousness and help them not to go out and get on drugs and alcohol and end up incarcerated. We gotta stop and think about what we're doing to one another and our children. And that's why I chose to do this topic today, the Black Parenting and Education, Dr. Umar Speaks. And in his speaking, I talked to you about buying his book. And this is the book that I bought. It's called Black Parent Advocate. And the Art of War for Dealing with America's Public and Charter Schools. And believe me, we need to deal with them. I raised two well, actually three children within the public school system. My daughter in the private part of the time, and then she went to the public school her last years, 10th, 11, and 12. However, she was in a private school from kindergarten. And I'm telling you, it wasn't any difference if, if she had been in the public school because they wanted me to drug her. And this was a Christian school out in Long Beach, California, where my kids were born and raised. So it's all over. It's not just in one uh, space. So this book, I would advise because it says it includes tips for school meetings. Don't just hand your children over if they tell you that your child has ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, because that's what they were trying to put on my daughter at six when my son had cancer. They were not supportive at that Christian school and I had advocated with them and advised them what was going on with my daughter. But did they care? It was all about the money, keeping uh, her in school on drugs. And I wasn't having it. 
I wasn't going to keep my daughter in school on drugs. No. And with me having a bachelor's in social work, I did what I needed to do first. I went and did some research on Ritalin and what it was all about. And come to find out, it was horrifying what I read about it. And I said, hell to the no. I'm not going to put my daughter on any Ritalin. So do your due diligence and your research. And if you don't have this book, get it because it has all kinds of information to help you to navigate yourself through the public school system, the charter school system, the Christian school system, no matter which school system it is. If it's not a black school that has the understanding on how to help us to navigate our kids, don't do it. Don't give your children drugs just because the school tells you. And I'm gonna uh, share this book with you uh, on the screen so you can better see it and what it looks like. And here it is. Black Parent Advocate, The Art of War for Dealing with America's Public and Charter Schools by Dr. Umar I. Fantunde. I hope I said your name right, Dr. Umar. And he's a psychologist, a clinical school psychologist. He has lots of uh, credentials, as you can see. And what he said made sense. A lot of you, I've heard people say, maybe you don't care for some of the things he says about his delivery. However, he is on point when it comes to this. I can tell you because I know firsthand what I went through with my daughter. And this Christian school attempting to have me to go and put her on drugs, to make her sit still and not talk in the class when she was talking for a reason. It was a root cause of it. She was frustrated because she didn't, she wasn't getting the attention she used to get and she was only six years old. And these are teachers, so they're not psychologists. They're not social workers, they're teachers. They're there to educate your child. And like I said, they're not getting the best education in these public schools. I went to an all, all black school because I'm 72 and I went to an all black school. And when I moved from Louisiana to California from an all black school, I graduated from the all black school, went to college in California. And believe me, there were challenges with me in college, going to college with some of the teachers that I encountered, white teachers. That was my first time ever going to an integrated school. And I learned more than some of my peers did because some of the things we talk about, they didn't know and I knew. So that was why I say we do need our own educational system. It's important that we do. So I'm so happy that Dr. Umar is uh, starting this school for, to start it out with black boys because they're the ones that need it the most. Many of these black boys don't have fathers in the home. The mother is incapable or don't have the time as Dr. Umar brought out. They're distracted by partying, don't have time for their children. And, and I don't know whether you all heard, I'm gonna stop sharing uh, right now, but I don't know whether you all heard this teacher I think she was about 22 years old and she was on YouTube that went viral talking about these um, kids that she was having ballet classes with, five-year-olds, and she's putting on the ballet music and they want to hear something by somebody called Sexy Red. I didn't even know who Sexy Red was at first. Called, I think she, they said it was called Pound Town, if I'm not mistaken. And you're letting your children hear this type of inappropriate music. No five-year-old should be listening to Sexy Red because I went uh, and looked it up and I don't care if Sexy Red hears it. I'll tell Sexy Red to her face. No, this is raunchy music. Well, why would a five-year-old, why would a parent allow their five-year-old to even listen to this type of raunchy music? Why aren't you having your child to read something like Black Labor, White Wealth? by Dr. Claude Anderson, or this other book by uh, Dr. Uh, Boyce Watkins. I've read it, it's called The Ten Commandments of Black Economic Power. Why not have them to read something like this? I bought the book and I read it. I don't have this one autographed. Dr. Excuse me a minute, Dr. Claude Anderson, 
I bought his book and read it back in the 1990s because it came out back then. Black labor, white wealth. This is something you should be teaching your children. And I met Dr. Anderson. I have his autograph. I don't know whether you can see it. There it is. I met him. And I have pictures with Dr. Claude Anderson. And I spoke with him. And um, that's what we should be teaching our kids. A five-year-old. Why are you letting your five-year-old listen to Sexy Red? Some raunchy hip-hop music that's destroying and just... It's, it's, it's derailing our community. So we have to come back to some common sense and some discernment. It's no way I would want my nine-year-old granddaughter to listen to that raunchy music by Sexy Red. Why not teach your children something that's gonna benefit them, something about investments or something that has some merit and benefit to help them to have better behavior so they don't end up incarcerated or dead at an early age, the way some of us are killing up one another. It's ridiculous. So that's why I decided to do this podcast today and talk about why I started doing a podcast. My son, Kenan, Mason, who has his own podcast, he's into fitness and wellness, the Kinetic Hour. Uh, we did a show in Hollywood. We did our own podcast. We went into the studio back in 2014, and we did it, I think, for four or five seasons. And I decided to start my own back in 2022, January. This month makes me going into three seasons of this. So again, I'm Louise Hicks, your host of this podcast, Aim to Purpose Spiritual Empowerment Hour. Be sure and, and subscribe. Give it a thumbs up. Leave your comments because we have to start elevating ourselves to a higher level of consciousness. And Dr. Umar, I want to thank you personally for bringing that teaching, preaching, and education. And I want to thank Dr. Um, Dr. Michael Bell for having you at Greater St. Stephen First Church in Fort Worth, Texas. We need more churches to do this. And I'm going to talk about that too in another, uh, pro another podcast. I'm going to talk about our Black churches because our Black churches need to do more. They need to unify. They don't even have the unification that should be brought forth with all the money they're getting, we, we could be doing so much better. So I'll be doing a podcast on that as well. However, today I chose to talk about Black parenting and education and Dr. Umar Johnson, who is really bringing education to us in the Black community, along with others. Like I mentioned this book, um, his book, Get It Parents, Please. Black Parent Advocate by Dr. Umar, because this is going to help you with your children that are in these public schools, because these public schools are by design not to elevate your Black children. And I'm speaking from my own personal experience with my daughter and my sons, too, because I had challenges with them in the public school system, having to speak with teachers. And we know, need more parents to educate yourselves. Listen to some of these speakers out here that's elevating and bringing benefits to us. Because some of this stuff out here on social media is so toxic. It's very toxic. So with that said, I want to tell you what my aim to purpose is about quickly. Aspiration, inspiration, motivation, edification, and determination with vision, hope, faith, knowledge, and action. Because if we don't take some action, we're not going anywhere. You have to step it up, move forward, read, because reading opens the mind to greater opportunities. So read, read, and read some more. Make 2024 a year of reading for you. That's important. That's part of your education, but you need to read the right books. Read the right thing. 
And I always talk about that scripture in the Bible, 2 Timothy 1, 7, where it talks about God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a, sign, a sound mind. And let's have that renewing of the mind so that we can elevate ourselves to a higher level of consciousness. And again, Thank you, Dr. Umar. I know you're traveling around the country now, but I'm going to send you this video and I'm going to send you my picture that we took when you autographed my book because you did ask me to send it to you and I'm going to send it to you. And I want to thank you for what you're doing and I am going to support what you're doing with that educational system, that school that you're going to be opening because we need that. And I can attest to it because I went to an all black school taught by all black teachers and they cared and they showed how much they cared. They'd go out to your home if you weren't acting right. They took the time to go to your home and parents were more cooperative than they are today. As this young 22 year old was saying, when she told this parent about the child and the parent is over there acting a fool, no discernment, no respect for the teacher who's trying to help your child and you're letting your children listen to Pound Town or whatever the name of it is by Sexy Red. That should be nowhere near your five-year-old child or four-year-old. So let's educate. Black parents, let's educate. Let's listen to uh, what Dr. Umar is talking about. Stop drugging our kids. It's nothing but a money thing and it's exploitation of our children. Let's stop it. Stop it now. Please stop it now. And again, I'm Louise Hicks, your host of Aim to Purpose Spiritual Empowerment Hour. Subscribe. Thumbs up, leave your comments. And as I always say when I leave, I want you all to have a great weekend. I'll be back probably during the week because there's so much going on in 2024. But always remember, your power lies within you. Let it loose because your destiny is your command. And until next time, much love. And we will talk soon. And again, kudos to Dr. Umar. That was a teaching and a preaching on that Kwanzaa celebration. And thank you again, Dr. Michael Bell of the Greater St. Stephen First Church and the congregation there. I salute you as well because we need more churches to do what you're doing. Everybody have a great one. Bye-bye for now.